Welcome back everyone to the second installment in vocal production from beginning to end. We are right in the middle, which means I am going to be talking all the way to the very end in this video, and I'm going to be talking about two things, reverb and delay, putting them on auxiliary tracks via a bus, and secondly, stereo space. Uh, how we can exploit the specific stereo space of these vocals and we can do it against the rest of the instruments in the song so that these vocals can pop and shine so we don't have to keep fighting for volume and so we don't have to keep turning up all of our tracks and then finally having our trap track clip terrible thing I hate when that happens All right. so first things first let's talk about reverb and delay via a bus an auxiliary track. All right. So if you do not know what bus track or uh, bus and auxiliary means at all, you need to crash course right now ASAP. I actually have a tutorial over these, so go check that out very quickly because I don't want to be talking over your head because most of this video is going to be um, with auxiliary tracks. So go check that out. It'll be right over here. Do it, mother. All right. So. For all of you who do know, and all of you who have just learned, let's do this. I am going to be sent via the effects bus um, to a random bus. I don't care. We're going to pick bus 10. Yep. And this bus needs to be set for right now to stereo output. All right. So it basically what's happening is it's another pit stop before this volume or this... Uh, actual track is going to the output, all right? And the amount of volume that our main track sends to this auxiliary track is dictated by this uh, little dial here next to our send that we set up, all right? And this is the reason why we put reverb and delay on that auxiliary track, is because we can we can manually choose how much uh, volume from our track that we want to be sending to that reverb or delay, all right? If we just put it straight up onto our track, uh, there's going to be a couple things that we have to do. We have to manually go in to the, say, reverb, and we have to affect the wet signal and the dry signal together against each other, and it gets really messy, and in the end, it honestly doesn't even sound as professional as a bus would sound. If we're talking about delay, we would have to mess with the feedback. We would have to make sure the feedback sounds all right. And uh, I mean, it's just a lot of work for a product that's not as professional as something that you need to be doing with with a bus and auxiliary track. It sounds great. So we have a couple options. If you want to do reverb and delay, you can send you can send this track to two different buses, one with reverb and one with delay, but they're not going to be affecting each other. If you want them to be affecting each other, say you want reverb on your delay, delay on your reverb, you need to send uh, the bus track, or you want to send the track to an auxiliary track with both reverb and delay on it, all right? Um, so yeah, let's do this real quick. Like I said, I want some reverb. And my favorite is Space Designer. Oh, by the way, this is an aside. The Space Designer Reverb is a very CPU intensive plugin. If you have Space Designers on all of your channel strips, on every single one of your channels, and your, com your project is continually crashing over and over and over again, uh, a good idea would be to put one Space Designer Reverb plugin on an auxiliary track and then just reach that plugin via a bus on all the tracks that need it. All right, so you're sending all your tracks to one reverb. All right, instead of your tracks being used with different re all different reverbs. All right, that's a nice alternative if you are, your CPU um, is being overloaded when you play your song. All right. All right. Now back to it. All right. Inside of this space designer, I am a fan of plate reverbs in general for vocals. Now, in your large, medium, and small spaces, you have plate reverbs that you can go through and check out. Um, I would highly suggest you going through these and uh, checking these out. My favorite is the blue plate inside of the medium spaces, though. So we're just going to be using that, and I'm going to turn the reverb up a little bit. The wet signal. Alright, now, <clears throat> I'm not going to put 
delay on this track, all right? And my reasoning for that is this. The amount of reverb and delay that you put on a track, if there's a lot of it, that means that your vocals are going to be set back into the mix, all right? If you put, if you are sparing, if you use the reverb and delay sparingly on your track, those vocals will be able to pop, they will be able to shine. All right, now with that being said, your reverb, your reverb needs to be on your track. Without it, it's gonna sound very dry and bland and unnatural, right? Because whenever anyone sings in a room, there is natural reverb in that room. When we record, we record into a room with no reverb, or we're supposed to be recording into a room with no reverb. And that is unnatural to begin with. So the whole point of that room is so that we can add this reverb in after the fact and it will sound natural, okay? All right, now, so I'm just going to be using Space Designer and this reverb because this is a rock song and I want those vocals to be popping out of the mix. If I put some delay on it, it's going to set this back into the mix and that's not good. It is good if, say, it's a very indie song, like a contemporary um, song, something that those vocals are very flowing, very long, um, you know, it's just honestly, listen to your song, if it wants, if it needs vocals, or if it needs delay, put some delay on it, you know, try it, why not that, why, why the, why the hell not, alright, so, what's gonna happen is, I'm going to play this track, and I'm going to check and see the amount of reverb that I want on this track, and we're just gonna kinda roll with it, aight, let's do this. So always Why do you pursue this life that I throw away? All right. So that's what I thought was a decent amount of reverb on my track. So I'm just going to imitate that. How much is it? Negative thirteen point six decibels. All right. Let's do that on the rest of the vocal tracks. Negative 13.6. Negative 13.6. Now, hey, by the way, if you want to uh, make sure you're using, if you have a ton of auxiliary tracks, make sure you name them. I'm going to call this Vox Effects. So if you do go to any track and you go to the bus, you can see the actual name next to the certain bus. And then so you can easily choose which one you want, and you don't get mixed up, and things don't get confusing. That's a really good thing to do, by the way. All right. So, we've put reverb on our tracks. Beautiful. All right. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about, and actually I want to talk about this briefly, is about stereo space, auxiliary tracks, and how to do this in the very end. This is more in the mixing phase. Phase. I go over this extensively in the Mixing Techniques Part 2 video that I have. I will post links to both of those, which you should definitely go check out. It's like putting a puzzle together, basically. All right, But in this, I'm going to make it pretty simple, and I'm only going to be finding the stereo space of the vocals and uh, EQing it against the rest of the song, which is not that hard at all. all right? So, to do this, I'm going to be sending my vocal tracks, instead of directly to the stereo output, to a certain bus, an auxiliary track, and that, I created it already, it's called the vocal auxiliary track, up here, bus 2. Alright, so, what this means is, all of my vocals are being routed to one single auxiliary track, and that single auxiliary track is right here, alright? And you can see the effects, but or the uh, vocal effects, and that is being sent to the stereo out. Something that I like to do is instead of sending this to the stereo out, the effects, I can send it right back also to this vocal auxiliary track. So all vocals and all of their effects are being sent to the same bus right before it is reaching the output. All right, and as you can see, I have one of those for drums, strings, all the all the strings and piano, 
all the guitar, and the bass. All right. So we have split all of these tracks up, all of these tracks that I had, into five main tracks. All right. Which is awesome. We need to be doing this. We need to be routing the sound from all of our tracks into auxiliary tracks. Why? Because we need to be EQing these groups of instruments together and against each other. All right, and I'm going to be doing that right now. So when we go to our vocal EQ on our vocal auxiliary track, we need to find the stereo space for this these vocals. All right, I've been talking a lot about that. All right, and the stereo space is where these vocals live. We need to instead of thinking about you know where it sounds the best we need to start thinking about all of our music in general all right guitars where do guitars live G vocals cannot live in the frequency range that guitars live in and we need to arbitrarily set values for our guitars our vocals and what happens is i just put out a note card and i write down values for each of these different um, auxiliary tracks where their stereo spaces are and then so that I can go into the channel EQ of each one and um, you know say alright like well okay when we went when we were way back in the EQ phase we said that these vocals sound great in the you know 2000 to 2500 um, Hertz range alright so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just go to right in the middle 225 2.25 kilohertz. All right, and I'm going to boost it about four decibels. All right, and I'm going to actually decrease that a little bit. All right, so now we have this gain. We've added gain at this certain frequency, and that frequency is going to be our arbitrary stereo space for our vocals. Now, what happens is we need to decrease that single spot in the rest of the tracks so that we can make some room in the mix for our vocals. All right, and that's option command and drag. And then I'm going to double click that instead of being at positive 4, I'm going to set it to negative 4. If I could. All right, there we are. Then I'm just going to do the option command drag again across the rest of my tracks. So, what happens is we exploited that stereo space that we arbitrarily found it could be wrong, it could be right. What's going to happen is when we start finding stereo space for all the rest of the tracks, we could say, you know, that stereo space needs to move, be moved up a little bit or down a little bit. It's very up to you as in the one as in the place you want to do it. But make sure it's near that frequency range that sounds the best that we chose at the very beginning for our vocal tracks, okay? So make sure you do that. Definitely. All right. Now that we have this vocal track and all of these other auxiliary tracks that are, you know, EQ'd against this vocal track, what we can do is when we play this song, these vocals will be definitely popping out of this mix, and they're actually going to sound too loud and too in front of the mix. So we will have to dial back the volume on all of our vocals together so that it sits perfectly right on top of the rest of the vocals not way in front of but just on top of and that's exactly where we want all these vocals so let's do that right now Alright, so you could see that in our mixer, we decreased it by negative 3.5 decibels, when in the beginning, we were just fighting over the volume of these, and which is amazing, it really is. So, needless to say, this stereo space does help out a ton, and you really need to get familiar with it, especially when you're doing rock songs. Um, it's rock songs, alternative, any big band songs, 
it's really useful, very, very useful. When you're talking about electronic music, you can definitely do it also. Um, your synths, your like lead synth, treat your lead synth as a vocal track and make that, cut that out in the mix so that that can be heard over anything, even if you slide it back the volume down a little bit. All right. So that's really all I had to talk about. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you have suggestions on future videos, tutorials that I should be making, please hit me up in the comments or a message. If you have questions on this video, or others for that matter, do the exact same thing. And finally, just comment, rate, subscribe like a bass. Do it. Peace out.